I made this casting in the days before I did videos, but I did take a series of photographs through the process. Here's the original part. As you can see, it's well past its use by date. It's very, very badly corroded uh, and definitely in need of a replacement. Here is the little housing uh, that goes with it, together with its split pattern and the core box. Uh, the housing too clearly needs to be replaced. There were a set of patterns that had been made for this many years ago, but unfortunately they had been stored in the roof of a hot tin shed and had suffered greatly. I passed them over to a friendly pattern maker who turned them into something that I could use to make moulds from. To help with the moulding process he also made me this odd side which sets up the parting line. Here we have the, the pattern, the odd side and the pattern plate with the split pattern for the little housing mounted on it. Four core boxes are required to make the cores for this particular part uh, and here they are shown open. The silver colour is a release agent that I use to get the cores out of the box. The cores are silicate CO2 and you'll notice that some of them have a piece of half inch all thread moulded into them. These cores required very careful venting in order to produce the part. Here we have the uh, pattern sitting in its odd side. Another view of the same thing. The drag half of the mould with the pattern removed. The cope half, that square in the middle is where the core fits that has the bolt sticking out of it and the bolt goes through the hole almost in the middle of the square. Here is the drag half of the mould with its two cores installed. Another view of the same thing which gives a pretty good idea of the parting line in this mould. The cope half with its core bolted up into place and the bolt protrudes right through the top of the mould and is held in place via the aluminium rod you can see here across the top of the mould. The moulds are now ready for pouring. Uh, we have one, two, five of them and two of the little housings over on the right. I'm pouring them using a ladle and, then, and uh, I'm melting the metal in an A90 crucible. It's just easy and convenient to do it this way. As usual, there's exothermic has been added to the risers to help with the feeding of the casting. Here are a few of the castings uh, having been removed from the mould. Uh, and the same again, but this time with the risers and gates removed. Now some pictures of the casting after it's been machined. The pattern maker actually did this machining. The little housing. The underneath of the pump and finally an assembly of the two bits together. Thank you for watching.